Hey, this is Alan Yip. Welcome to Student Lifeboat. Our mission is to save students from drowning in the ocean of stress and studies and to help you smoothly sail to the shore of your success. And today is a continuation of how to study smart. Specifically, I'll teach you how to read smartly. So first of all, I'm holding the IGCSE Chemistry textbook. And suppose you are about to study chapter 5, okay? And just like in other subjects as well, history, geography, biology, and all these subjects, how do you actually read in a smarter way? Well, most students would just open the textbook, right? And let's say chapter 5. They would just start reading. Top down, page by page. Is that how you have been reading? If that is the case today, consider another option, all right? So first of all, I'm going to introduce to you a new technique, and this is called SQ4R. So I listed on the whiteboard, and later on I'll put everything together, so you have the complete picture of how to study smart. First of all, SQ4R, and I'm going to just go with the first two steps. Okay, first, this is for scan. That means later on, when we want to study the chapter, we need to be like the eagle flying over the forest, having a bird's eye view of the chapter. It's almost like before you drive to a destination, you want to check, check on the map how the journey will look like. The second step, very powerful, and this is the secret of top students. They are no different from you are. They are just doing things very differently because they question. They question more so that they increase their understanding. And therefore, this step is question, okay? And now as we peel this onion layer by layer, the first, the third step is read. And I'll show you how to do it. After you have read, you want to recite. When you recite, you want to recite out loud, if possible. Okay, of course, if you're in the library or on you know, public transport, you're not going to do that, right? And after you have recited, did you miss anything? If you have, go ahead. Go back to the chapter to review and the last step, relate. Okay, so let's jump right in. Okay, I'm going to go back to chapter 5 and I'm going to hold up this chapter so you can just move along with me. Okay, so just bear with me. Now, first thing, begin with the end in mind. And literally, I don't want you to start with the introduction. I want you to go to the back. And this is the back of the chapter. And what do you usually notice? You will see the chapter summary. Or in some of the textbooks, you will see a concept map. Wonderful. So what I want you to do is I want you to study the summary point by point, okay? And what does it do for you? Because it will teach you or tell you all the important points in this chapter. After you have studied the chapter summary, now it's time to really go fast, okay? Maybe not furious, but you want to go fast. So you want to go back to the beginning of the chapter and now pay attention to headings, subheadings, diagrams, pictures, charts, and things like that. And go fast because the whole process of scanning, okay, like in this case, the topic, Acids, bases, and salts. Well, what is an acid? So you get an idea only. When you look at it, there's a study tip. That's pretty cool. So what's that all about? And you see the color chart. Well, this is pH value. Now, I'm reading this out loud so you can move along. But when you are studying on your own, you want to just mentally go fast. And as you read, for example, the subheading, universal indicator, what is that? What does it indicate? What does it measure? So you ask the questions, the pH scale, what does it do? And when you have a value of 7 and greater than 7, lower than 7, what does that mean? And continuing, okay? So I'd like for you to just go through it very fast. Metal oxides, non-metal oxides, the types of acids and acid reactions in everyday life. Oh, interesting, okay? And so if you can just go through it very fast, Get an idea, the headings, subheadings, turn them into questions, 
ask what are they about, where, who discovered that, and which of these is important. And lastly, when. Of course, don't forget the age. How? How is it done? How does acid react with, for example, base or alkaline? Now, the whole process here, how long will it take? Five minutes. Okay? Scan question. When you read, you read for about 15 minutes. And essentially, from now on, when you read, you want to read a little bit faster because I don't want you to just dwell on every single word or backtrack, there's no need for that. And usually with a heavy duty subject like chemistry, you need to read more than once. So the first time, you just go with it. Because I want you to get the big picture, the understanding how this forest looks like. Next time when you go back to read, you read in greater detail. You want to pay attention to the trees, okay? The, content but for now just go fast and one more thing as i train students and also go to um, fast food restaurants or uh, cafes and so forth many students have many uh, highlighters and guess what they are working hard highlighting everything <laughs> almost like a masterpiece i don't suggest you do that for the first round of reading use a pencil and set a timer about 15 minutes you want to stop and use the pencil to mark where you stopped do not highlight anything okay if you have questions if this is your book write the question at the margin if not just write in your notebook it's a very good thing to have questions because questions serve as almost like fishing hooks because when you read the questions oh yeah this is the answer for the question got it so far and lastly these three process after you have read for about 15 minutes now you want to just very quickly summarize it recite close the book what are the types of acids can you name them okay how is the reaction between acid and alkaline can you quickly recall the, re the equation okay or the reaction is okay and if you miss something Go back to the chapter and review, ah, that is the information I missed. And when you do that, it's really cool because actually the brain requires forgetting in order to learn something. And last step, relate. That means apply it. Ah, I remember now. That's how the teacher was explaining in class or you can relate to everyday life, right? How acid reacts with alkaline. And this is the process of reading smart, and it's called SQ4R. It's not a flight number, okay? It's not the name of a droid in Star Wars. It's a very powerful technique that you can use. Now, let me put everything together, okay? And this is a powerful video. Earlier, I talked about how to study smart. If you notice one thing, go ahead. Okay, for those of you who can do your mental arithmetic very quickly, add this up for me. It's what? 25 minutes. And does it ring a bell? Look at it. 25 minutes. That means if you are doing what we call academic reading, you do one SQ4R for physics. And English, well, maybe it doesn't apply. Okay? And for geography, you do another SQ4R. And that is how you can maximize and really maximize the return on energy on time. And one more piece of information, okay, very important, is one thing to learn and to understand, is another thing to record and organize what you have learned. And therefore, let me now introduce to you the twin system of reading, and that is note taking or what we call note making. Top students don't just record everything down. Top students, they record the key points. They summarize, they paraphrase uh, what the teacher talks about in their own words. So I want to show you a template, okay? Suppose this is your blank page in the notebook. And what you do, simply, Draw a big eye. Okay, this is really cool to them. 
teaching you two strategies for you to read smartly and also learn smartly. At the top, you write a topic. Okay, so topic. Now, earlier, what did we study? Acids, right? Alkaline and salts. So you want to write that here. Is okay? And on the left hand side, if you notice this is like a big capital I. On this side, you want to write a definition. Okay, for example, you, you, you want to write things that will require you to define, okay, on your IGCS exam or O level exam or A level exam or university exam. It doesn't matter really which level you are at. The techniques will serve you more or less universally. So go ahead and write down all these key terms. And now, based on your understanding, or from the reading from the textbook, you want to write, leave space so you can always add additional information to it. So on this side, you have, for example, definitions, terms, or concept. And on the right hand side, you want to explain, okay, the definition, the concept, and so forth. And really importantly, at the bottom, you want to have a summary. And go ahead, in your own words, you now go ahead and write down what this chapter or what this topic is all about. And make sure you date, okay? Always date October. So go ahead and write down the date. And now you have the record. And you can file all these sheets of notes in the proper sequence and lastly lastly it's always a good idea to review just like right here and in fact review every week the key things that you have learned how do you review simply cover this side okay so imagine again this is your notebook you cover this side and now what is the definition of this what is the definition of that can you recall or better yet, can you go ahead and write all these definitions on paper? Okay, so in that, that way, you are used to recalling or what we call outputting. And with that, and this is another very powerful technique for you to take notes or make notes and ask you for all to read in a smart way. So with that, I hope this, uh, this video has taught you something very valuable. If you like it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe and also tell your friends because your friends, your buddies and classmates may be in the same boat. Thank you.